Good morning, everyone. Very good for IELTS classes. I am Tanu Vimani, an IDP certified trainer and a TEFL to SOL certified trainer. So as you know that we are commencing our speaking module and I'm coming up with the live sessions for the speaking module. Today is our live session number nine, which is about complete ILTS speaking test. How the speaking test is conducted? What are the questions that are asked? So we will be doing a live speaking test today. Before starting this, I would suggest to the candidates who are watching this session for the first time, please go back to all those eight sessions and watch it, right? Because you will be on track with me to crack your IELTS module, this particular module, speaking module. So now how is speaking test conducted? What is complete speaking test? You know that IELTS speaking test has three parts. The part one is about that examiner will first introduce themselves and then they ask you for your identity, right? And then they will ask you some general questions about your family, your home, your work, your hobbies, basically. Then second part is a cue card topic where they give you one minute to prepare and then two minutes to speak about it. Then part three is a discussion round where they ask you some questions in a detailed manner and you have to answer those. Now let's start with part one. We'll be doing a complete speaking test today. Let's start with part one. What are the questions that are going to ask here? Okay. Now examiner will be asking you the question. What is your full name? I am Tanu Lakhani Virmani. You can call me. Tanu. Can I see your ID? Yes, definitely. Here it is. Where are you from? I am from Kanyakumari, the underlying beauty of India in the state of Tamil Nadu. It is also known as Cape Comoran and is also known as the land end of India. Okay, let's talk about home now. Do you live in a house or a flat? I live in a house which is located on the outskirts of a small town. I have lived there for almost five years with my parents. Which is your favorite room? Probably the sitting room. To be honest, we all spend most of our time in the sitting room because it's the coziest room in the house. It's much nicer than all other rooms in our house. Can you describe it? Well, it's not particularly large, but even so, it feels quite spacious. There are two huge comfy sofas, an open fire, which we light in the dark winter months. And on the walls, there are some rather beautiful oil paintings of country scenes from the area where we live. It's quite a pretty room. Lots of natural light. If you could improve one thing in your house, what would it be? Well, if I could change just one thing, I would probably choose to change my bedroom. At present, it's rather small with almost no view at all. If I could alter it in any way, I would enlarge it to have a private study area where I could do some work and I would improve the view by planting some lovely trees and shrubs outside the window. I think being able to sit at a window and see nature is really important. Let's talk about films now. Do you enjoy watching films? Oh yes, I'm a bit film fanatic actually. I watch films most weekends and quite often during the week as well. I much prefer films to TV programs. What kind of films do you like the most? I, I really like to like a wide variety of film genres. But if I had to choose a type of film, I would say I mainly go for suspense and psychological thrillers. 
in fact some of my favorite films are the whole hickok films he really was the master of suspense did you watch much tv as a child no i didn't my parents encouraged us that's my brother and me to spend time outdoor rather than sitting inside watching tv so we only ever had a chance to watch tv for an hour each evening before we went to the bed i can't say it was very really common because most of my friends watched lots of tv are foreign film are foreign language films popular in your country no they are really not popular compared to the domestic films i mean there are some asian films from india and china as well as some films from europe as well but i think having to read the subtitle puts people off watching them it's a shame really because i think it's important for people to watch more foreign films in order to learn more about other culture okay let's talk about greeting people would you greet someone who was visiting your house well i would probably welcome them into the house and offer them a cup of tea that's usually the way it's done in my country we don't really have any in any formal way of welcoming people would you greet an old friend and a stranger in the same way no definitely not if it's a close friend who i have known for a long time i give them a hug and kiss but if it's a stranger i would either shake hands with them or just say hello nice to meet you and nothing more how do you meet new people i mainly meet new people through friends whenever i have dinner with the friends there's nearly always someone there that i haven't met before and that how i usually extend my circle of friends do you think first impressions are important oh yes from the first time you set eyes on someone you already form some kind of an opinion about them about their lifestyle their background or what kind of person they might be that's why i always think it's really important to give a good impression when you meet someone for the first time now this is the end of your part 1 let's move towards part 2 now you all know that part 2 is a cue card topic so how your cue card will start let's see here now i'm going to give you a topic to talk about here is pen and paper with you you have 1 minute to make notes and then you have to speak for 2 minutes i would like i would like you to talk about a holiday you recently had please start making notes and i'll let you know when it's time to begin topic a holiday you recently had that means you have to describe about a holiday where you spent who you spent with what you did there and why you enjoyed it so your one minute is started now after one minute you have to speak for two minutes Okay 
now your one minute is up and you have to speak for two minutes right i would like to talk about a holiday that i took to the south coast of england just two months ago i went to a small village in the coastal region called cornwall it's really well known for its dramatic coastal scenes, stunning landscape, and also for its tasty food. I went with my parents who had never been to this area of England before. They always wanted to go but never had a chance because of the work commitments. Anyway, Cornwall is quite far from where we live. So we decided that it would be better to fly there rather than take the car. The roads and traffic are notoriously bad in that part of England. On our arrival, when we found, got to the little village, we found our way to the cottage we had booked, which overlooked the sea. I can't tell you how gorgeous it was there. It was just lovely. The windows of my room overlook a little harbor and I could see all the boats coming in and out and all the seagulls flying around. We spent most of our holiday sightseeing. We visited all the local towns and villages and tried most of the local delicacies such as the fresh crab and lobster. My father is a keen fisherman, so he did a bit of fishing while my mother and I relaxed in little cafes somewhere just chatting with the locals. It was so relaxing. I think the thing I remember most about the holiday will be just how friendly and welcoming all the locals were. It felt like home from home. By the time we finished the two-week holiday, we had made lots of friends and I'm sure we all will keep in touch. If I ever get the chance to go back, I would love to go and possibly stay longer, maybe for a few months. There's still so much of the countryside that we didn't explore. So there'll still be plenty to see when we return. And that is the end of your cue card topic. Now the examiner will asking you some questions related to part three. Now part three will be based on the topic of your cue card. Your cue card was about a holiday. So you will get some questions related to holidays and travel. Now I would like to talk more about holidays and traveling. Now the examiner asked the candidate, if you had the chance to travel anywhere, where would you go? That's really difficult for me to answer because there are so many places I like to go. But I suppose if I had to pick, I would choose India, mainly because of the incredible landscape and also because of the fascinating culture there. I always like to go to countries which have a rich culture steeped in history and India certainly has that. I think I would be blown away by the colors, the sounds, the aroma of amazing foods and by the local people. I have heard that local people are very welcoming and hospitable to foreigners. I think going to India would be a dream come true for me. Why do you think some people like to travel alone? Well, I suppose one reason could be that when you travel alone, you are completely free to do exactly what you want. You don't need to consider anyone else when you're planning your itinerary or whenever you want to change it. It can be quite annoying not to be able to do exactly what you want when you are on a holiday. Also, Another reason why some people might prefer traveling alone is that it's easier to make friends and meet people. What I mean is, other people are much more likely to start chatting to you when you are on your own than if you are already with someone. So traveling on your own can be more exciting and more interesting. Do you think travel has changed much over the last few decades? Yes, I do. It's changed beyond all recognition, really. In the past, only wealthy people were able to travel. 
not only because of the expense, but also because of the time it took to the travel long distances. You know, it could be sometime take days to go from one culture to another. They would either have to travel over land or by sea. Nowadays, of course, there are budget flights all over the world and anyone can afford to travel. Travel has become so cheap and it's often cheaper to travel abroad than in your own country. So not only is it easier to travel, it is also more accessible to the average person. How does travel change people? I guess it changes people in number of different ways. For the individual travel, traveler, it gives them a chance to learn about how other people live and other culture. This helps them to become more tolerant and accepting of differences, which is really important nowadays in a time when there is so much tension between the culture and religion. Also, travel can affect local cultures a lot. What I mean is, it brings foreign foreigner to more remote places in the world where previously there was little outside contact. This can change the way they earn money and the type of work they do as instead of doing traditional jobs. They focus more on making money from the tourist industry. I think that's a quite worry because if there is a sudden drop in the number of people traveling, local culture will suffer as a consequence. Do you think there are any disadvantage to the modern travel? Yes, for sure. I think the main drawback is of course pollution, air pollution, because there are so many budget flights these days. It has really increased the number of people traveling by plane and the number of flights each day. This has led to serious problems with air pollution, which affects the entire world, not just the country with the most flight. So I think this is a major world problem and really needs to be addressed either by reducing the number of flights or finding a clear energy resource. Another disadvantage is that people are able to move so easily from one country to another that they almost forget they're in a new country. I mean, if you take Thailand as an example, many tourists are so busy just having fun and doing what they want that they forget that they are in a relatively traditional culture and they act and dress inappropriately. I think that really is quite a disadvantage of modern travel. This is the end of your complete speaking test. Now you can see that how examiner will be asking you part one question, then comes your part two of cue card and how you are supposed to have your part three. How you need to give answers in the part three, right? So they'll be asking you a hypothetical question. They'll be asking you some opinionated questions. They'll be asking you about comparison based questions and you have to elaborate your answer in depth. So at the end of this session, I would advise you, please go through all the eight sessions before watching this complete speaking test. Start practicing on the baby food application. There are multiple tests available. Check your scores on a daily basis. Drop your comments in the comment section so that I know how much you are improving, right? You can watch our session on the YouTube, even on the baby code application. Do the star rating, provide your feedbacks, your comments. If you want me to cover any something related to the speaking module, you can drop your comment. I will be coming up with that session. I'll try to create every session, whichever you are in need of, right? So be prepared. Make sure that you are preparing well for your ILTS exam. Any guidance you need from my end, you can drop in the comment section. I will help you out. Thank you so much for watching my live session number nine. Stay tuned for the upcoming session. I'll be coming up with something new. Bye-bye. Take care, all of you. See you soon in the next sessions.